Yeah, it's my privilege to introduce Gina Mayberry, one of our ministers, and a dear friend of mine, uh, a compatriot, and one that I always look forward to hearing from, because she always brings the best of what she has learned from the previous year. And so to me, it's such an exciting uh, session to listen to. So, and uh, Gina, just... I know you've got other, you know, I know you do access consciousness and uh, everything. So any other modalities that you want to share? Um, no. And, and that's, um, I mean, I do access consciousness. I do sessions with quantum touch. I um, do quantum allergy. I do Reiki. I you know, I've done, I've probably been certified in probably 40 some different things, most of which I have given up. And that's part of what I'm talking about tonight. So, um, I, I just want to tell you, thank you for the invitation. And um, I'm really happy to be here tonight and happy I can do this. Um, and this was an interesting process for me this year because in years past, I've always talked about um, the, my best new find or my modality of the year or something like that. And this year, um, I intended to do the same thing. And, you know, I, I tested over the course of the year probably about 17 different little modalities or little known modalities and nothing resonated with me this year. Um, my criteria is always that it needs to be um, something that's easy to learn, easy to share, doesn't have any expensive equipment, no expensive training to get started. And, um, you know, that's, you know, basically uses nothing but your hands or maybe pencil and paper sometimes or something like that. And this year's, uh, there were some that met the criteria, but nothing jumped out at me and I didn't find anything I thought was special. And so we get, we got into October and I still didn't have anything. And, you know, at first I wasn't worried because I picked my date early and, um, and I had lots of time. And we get to October and late October and I still don't have anything. And I'm, you know, and I talked to Alice and, and Donna and just like, I have to meditate on this because <laughs> nothing is coming. And so I did meditate and I got the title, which was um, New Tools for the New Energy. But no content. I'm like, thanks, guys. <laughs> you know? um, and then like a day or two later, I opened up my laptop and like this never happens. But um, I opened up the laptop and there and like because I always close everything down. But then my la it's it's on and there is a, um, a video from Cryon which Alice introduced me to Cryon in, in 2012 when I first started going to Rays of Healing and I, she had me read some of the books and I looked at some of the videos. And, and but for the last four or five years, I really have let the ball drop where Cryon was concerned and I hadn't kept up. And, but I figured, you know, you know I don't believe in coincidence or I don't believe that there's a coincidence that it's a synchronicity and there's a reason for this because this was something really out of the ordinary. And so I said, well, you know, I, I made note of what the, the video was and I said, okay, to cry and look, can we have a date for tomorrow and I'll <laughs> see what you have to say. And lo and behold, it was tips and tweaks basically for healing and it met every one of my criteria. So honestly, this was the best. And, um, and, and actually I didn't have just one date with Cryon. I had like four and they, you know, I looked it through a lot, a lot of material and 
you know, I picked the things that were most relevant for me personally in my practice um, to share with you because he was talking about there is new energy. There has been an energetic shift. It's still changing. You know, the energy is moving faster and, you know, it requires new, new ways to deal with it, which was exactly what I was looking for. And it just appeared. So, um, and I thought about the modalities that I had been using and why. And I had really pared down the things that I, I was using, and I didn't really do it on purpose. Probably part of it was for COVID. Partly, partly some of it was because this new office that I'm using in Falls Church had its. Yeah, it's fairly large. It's got a number of different rooms, but none of them are huge. So I can't do big events, but nobody was coming to big events anyway. So um, so some of it was this, this space. Some of it, I think it was just me. And, and I didn't know why I changed. I'm still doing quantum touch sessions. And I usually, usually use them when there's somebody has a physical issue. And access bars is mental and emotional issues primarily, and Reiki and spiritual counseling for the spiritual issues. And you know, I there's certain things I do for balancing, tuning forks, yoga nidra, and and dowsing. I pretty much just do for for balancing chakras and things like that. And I didn't realize I had let everything else go. Um, so, and that was a revelation to me too. I had stopped doing Reiki shares um, and I had stopped doing access bars shares. And part of that is because I looked at it as just for practice. And, and I wasn't really thinking about, you know, serious healing that might be happening during them. Um, and, and I was bored with some of the other stuff we did. I had, you know, some experiences where I was hosting a lot of shamanic stuff and, you know, I was getting bored as they were calling in, you know, the directions for 20 minutes at a time. And, you know, some of the other stuff, um, some of the ceremony stuff and some of the routine stuff was, I was just, I was just bored with it. And I thought, you know, do I need a vacation? Do I need to retire? <laughs> what do I need to do here? Um, so I first started before I, I actually looked at this video, I began to think about what I knew about healing and in healing and the changing energy. And I could feel the change in the energy. I could feel it with my clients. I could feel it in my own work. And I could, you know, I heard about it from my colleagues too. Um, and with my clients, um, they were really undone when things started changing. Um, if things in their physical world started changing and the energy started changing and they started waking up more and um, you know, people were being called to move to different parts of the country and to quit their jobs without another job or um, to change jobs or, you know, to show up in their own life and for their families, for their kids particularly, and or to stand up for what they believed in. Um, and they didn't know what was happening and frankly, neither did I. And, um, and I think we all felt like things will never go back to quote unquote normal that they may go we may we will find a new normal but they're not going to go back to the way they used to be and with my colleagues they were telling me that things that they used to that used to work for them in healing didn't work anymore and so they were wondering you know what is that all about did i lose my connection did you know do, am i doing something wrong is you know is there something new and you know, I didn't have an answer for that either. And things that I noticed in my own work um, was that my sessions went faster. And that wasn't just me, but, you know, 
I used to plan an hour and a half for an access bar session. I had scheduled two hours because by the time, you know, people come in and talk and they do the session and they say goodbye, it's, it's you know, two hours would just about give me time for a glass of water before the, the next person came in. Now, 45 minutes. And with Reiki, um, distance, set, well, I found that the distance, distance section distance sessions worked even better than before, which was shocking to me. Um, when we were closed down, I gave away 15 minute Reiki sessions every Tuesday and I was full every week, like the whole day. And so many people said, I got as much out of 15 minutes as I used to get out of an hour when I used to go to the Reiki place down the street. Or, and I got such good feedback from that. And I thought, oh, if they're getting in 15 minutes, you know, what I, what I used to do in an hour. And a lot of these were clients that I didn't know. They were coming from all over the country. And, and they all said the same thing. And so I said, you know, the energy's moving faster. Things are really happening faster. So I stopped doing hour Reiki sessions. And now I do only half hour Reiki sessions. And the other thing I found was that more frequent sessions and over a shorter with a shorter time for each session were actually more effective in terms of the healing that actually happened. So that was something that was just really astounding to me. Um, but it's still I'm still finding that to be true. Um, and one thing I found is I had lost interest and actually stopped clearing things. I stopped clearing spaces. I stopped clearing crystals. I stopped clearing a lot of other things. Um, and I stopped using, you know, I, I used to use crystals in my work. I used to use essential oils. I used to use, you know, anything that I thought would help. And... Um, and I found I only mentioned them even if somebody asked, specifically asked. And so those are the things that I noticed. And then I started listening to this video and Cryon told me that in the new energy, there's, there's only one process for healing, um, doing readings for people and past life work. If you can do one of the, those things, you can do them all because we are all receiving acceleration from the other side of the veil. We are receiving help through compassionate guidance. And that's another thing that I noticed. I've, I never viewed myself as a healer. I always viewed myself as a helper more than a healer um, because I really had no background for this. I wasn't particularly intuitive. Um, especially at first, I think I've, I've gotten more so over time, but, um, so I never viewed myself as a healer and I never rarely attempted a reading or, or anything like that. And I found that I was getting more and more. And as Alice, as you said, when, you know, I was asking for more, so I was getting more, but it was still, it was still surprising to me, but I never looked at them all as being in the same category. And, and Karen said, it's all the same energy. It's all the same connection. It's, um, that's the way it works. And then the next thing, we're just tied in with what I just said, the clearing. Karen said, we don't need to do manual physical clearing anymore. No clearing of spaces, no clearing of crystals, no smudging. He said, you are carrying light. You clear a room by your presence. And he went on to say that this is not going to work if you carry crutches as if you didn't have enough light. The um, examples he gives are crystals, remedies, guardian angels, um, violet flame. He said, this is old energy. If you use them, you are telling your cells you don't trust your light. And 
So that that was a big um, aha for me. And this actually reminded me of Wanda talking about how she started out using tarot cards to do readings. And then after doing thousands of them, um, she found she no longer needed the cards. She just did the straight up readings, right? And then there was one time long ago, probably my first year at Rays of Healing, um, she, I had been asked to do a presentation on crystals. And afterwards, she told me, you know, you don't need the crystals. And my reaction at the time, I, I clearly didn't understand it. In light of all this, I didn't understand it because my reaction was, yeah, okay. I know I don't need them. Um, but all, but you know, I, I likened it in my mind to you know I can walk to the store too, but sometimes I like to drive, and that was the analogy I, had, you know, my reaction to to what she had said to me, and I thought that those skills had enhanced what I did, made it faster, made it quicker, made it better, and so literally it took me. To in years um, some help from crying to, to, to get it, what she was saying. And I think she was just like, I had a shift at the time because um, that, that, that everything okay? Can you still hear me? Can you hear me? You are breaking up there, Gina. You can't hear me. Yeah. Can you can hear me hear now? You? Yeah, we can hear okay. you. We're just breaking up there right. for a few minutes. Okay. Um, let's see, where am I? So Karayan suggested that if we have favorite things we like to use, um, when we do our healings to integrate that to have a little ceremony and integrate them into our own energy um where we tell our bodies that we are done with the crutches um you know and ask that like the energy of the crystals or the violet flame or the angels or whatever be integrated with our own energies and say tell our bodies that we are done with the crutches. He says, claim it to be true and the dark will run from you. So that was, that was an interesting thing too. And then the next thing was belief. Um, he says in the new energy, we will, we will heal ourselves. And, um, you know, and we've heard for years all healing and self-healing, but this, he feels that, Crayon feels, I think, that although we can and should and must heal other people or help them heal themselves, we will take a more prominent role in healing our own selves. And he says, when we align with pure intent, we can heal ourselves. The body picks up on our belief. Belief is key in this new energy. We heal with consciousness, not action. So it's our thoughts that heal, not anything we do. Um, and that's, Wendy, that's the, like the Joe Dispenza stuff, right? Your thoughts can heal, right? Isn't that what he did? So... Um, if you're, and didn't he say, like, if your thoughts can make you sick, your thoughts can heal you, too? So this is very consistent. And he, I think a lot of his stuff is um, energy for the new, or techniques for the new energy, just, as, just the same. Um, and, there, and I think in a lot of ways, the two, even though they come from such different points of view, um, when being channeled and... And the other one coming from a very kind of scientific, non, tries to be non 
spirituals, so to appeal to everyone. Um, um, they, they end up saying the same things. Um, this, and the, and the, let's see, I, I got myself off track here. Um, and, and it isn't about whether it will work or not, because the predicate for working is to have this this unshakable belief that it will, that it can, that that it must. Um, and in order to heal yourself or someone else, both the healer and the person being healed must believe it will work. Um, and the brain and the heart must be open to that possibility. And as far as self-healing goes, I mean, some of you have heard me um, or been in my classes. have heard me talk about my first quantum touch class where I had a spontaneous healing. Um, the part of the story I don't always tell is that I was brought up in the Episcopal Church. And at that time, and still today even, most of those churches had hands-on healing services and um, on Wednesdays. And like, I never really understood it. I never heard it talked about in terms of energy. It was always talked about in terms of the Holy Spirit. But I knew it was there. And I knew it because I, you know, from when I was four, I went to preschool at the church and we used to watch them do the hands-on healing. Didn't know what it was, what they were doing. But part of that is probably led me to the belief that, if, you know, this is something I'm, I'm familiar with. This isn't weird to me, even though I knew nothing about energy work. I knew less than anybody else in that room. Um, so... I think I had the belief that it would work for me. And my healer was a Reiki trained massage therapist. And so it just really clicked that day for us. And I had that healing. But the minute the healing happened, the minute it was over, I got mentally hooked. And, you know, how did it happen? Why did it happen? Can I learn how to do it too? And after that, it was a very long time before I learned how to let go and get myself out of the way so that, you know, I could do it too. Um, and um, let's see. What next? And so I then started looking for answers to my, my own questions. Um, and so Cryon, why doesn't healing work all the time? And the answer I got was that fear is the opposite of healing. If you can't get past the fear, it will stop the healing cold. So you have to believe the healing will happen and you can't be afraid it won't or what will happen if it doesn't work. Um, true healing is not done with objects and remedies. It's done with consciousness and awareness. And that is constantly expanding. So the possibilities are greater and greater. Um, and then another question I had, and I, I dug around till I found the answer. Cryon, what are things that didn't work before that work now? And um, one of them was affirmations. And that was a shock to me. Because in, when I was in my 20s, I spent a lot of time doing self-development. And affirmations was something that I li literally lived. I listened to them while I cooked. I listened to them while I slept. I listened to them in my car. I was doing them everywhere. And the results were so-so. Um, and they've been around for 
probably 50 years, at least 50 years, so maybe 70, 75 years, something like that. And back then, I was listening to someone else say them. And, and that may be the problem. Or, you know, Cryon said the timing wasn't right, and maybe that was part of the problem, too. But he says, you must create them and speak them out loud to your body. He talks about the innate as the smart body, like another subtle body. Um, and he calls it the innate. And I always thought that he was talking about your higher self. But no. Um, it was very clear that the innate is the this, this quote-unquote smart body, the part of you that you muscle test and is the basis for kinesiology. The innate is connected to the quantum field, and the innate can be reached by homeopathy, which was interesting to me too. Innate sees the instruction and tells the body what to do to connect you to the field so that you can heal. You can speak to the innate verbally now, talk out loud to the innate always, and give instructions to the body. He says, craft your affirmations carefully. Be careful what you ask for. Positively state who you are, not what you want. For example, I am healed, I am whole, thank you, spirit. That was one of the examples that he gave as a well-crafted affirmation that you can use if you are doing self-healing. Um, if you tell your body who you are, the fear goes away. And fear was one of the things that stopped the healing. And it allows, when you speak to your body like that, it allows the body to begin to relax. And we know from access consciousness that the body remembers everything that's ever been said to it or about it. But the body also holds all the trauma, all, you know, and becomes... And this may be, Wendy, I know you're my expert, but this may be a Joe Dispenza thing too. The body is the unconscious memory, right? Um, so when you're, you're engaging your body and your body is in fear, nothing is going to happen. And... Um, In the, and so one way of getting out of that, I think this is why he added the thank you spirit at the end, because gratitude is a higher vibrating emotion. Um, and when you are in gratitude, it's easier for your body to receive. And so any of the healing that comes to it, is, I think, would be... Um, Prepare, the body will be more prepared to receive if it's in the, feeling the gratitude. Um, and you are creating a time and a fractal of the future by doing this, by doing this, um, these affirmations. What you, I think that what they're trying to do is to have you be in the present moment, but be living in the future in, your pre in this present moment. Um, and so, you know, when you have the belief and, you know, you're doing the affirmations, there's a much more, much more high probability, a much higher probability that it will work. Um, and again, he says, state who you are and who you are going to be, as if it is, you know, as stated in the present, um, and express your gratitude. Um, Cryon has also suggested talking directly to the cells in your body, um, and he has used the acronym CAL, call, 
cells are listening. And he says to tell your body, there's a new sheriff in town, and this is how it's going to be from now on. And <laughs> tell your body exactly what you want it to do. Tell the cells what you want to, what you want them to do. And he says the body has been waiting for you to pick up that phone and make that call, and um, and to take charge and to tell it what you want to do, not to st to stop giving our power away to other people when nobody knows our body better than we do and nobody knows um exactly how we feel we a lot of times we know we know what our body needs or we can ask our, our body has its own consciousness separate from our mind and that's an another um, tenet of access consciousness, but I have seen that borne out over and over again. Um, and you can you can reach this again through muscle testing and kinesiology. Um, and then I started the my, the biggest question I ever get from my clients, and probably you do too, is what is my purpose? And so I started, I asked Karen, you know, what is my purpose? And I was led to, you know, a passage in, in one of the videos where it says, your purpose is to be. Your presence, just your presence can change the energy of wherever you are. And, you know, I remember hearing somebody say, you know, that when someone walked into a room, everything changed. And we can all be that. We need to be conscious of our light. Um, and that we can have this effect. And for, for a cry, and that was enough. You know, and the, another thing he talked about was that your purpose is to be compassion in action. You are here to become more compassionate in your life to become more like the masters and with no selective compassion. So look inside others and see why, see what they chose. Have compassion for all. Look into the heart of everyone and see the face of God. What their path is, is none of your business. And then you have no judgment. And this, I mean, this that's really appropriate for right now, whether somebody got a vaccine or didn't get a vaccine or who they voted for or any of those things or whatever their, their path is, if they decided to change their path or, you know, that is really, that's not something for us to weigh in on. They may have reasons, you know, there may be no real right or wrong when it comes to your choices um and it, it may be just a difference of which lessons are you choosing to learn because there's going to be lessons no matter what you choose and you know I, I read in a dog training book one time that there's no bad dogs just inappropriate um inappropriate surroundings or inappropriate contexts and that applies to people too. So, you know, there are some times that killing somebody is self-defense. Um, you know, and sometimes it's not. Um, and, let me see. Oh, and there was, there was one more thing I wanted to talk about. And you, you will all be going home or going, being done early tonight. But um, there is one last thing. Cryon does say that the group healing is more powerful than individual healings. And which is interesting because like I just talked about, or, you know, a half an hour ago, I talked about um, how I wasn't doing Reiki share. I wasn't doing bar shares. You know, I stopped, part I was participating in a, um, 
the power of eight group and I stopped doing that. Um, even though I had some good results with it. So, you know, that was, that was a wake up call for me too. And so, it's, you know, starting this week, I'll probably, you know, try to do some at least small Reiki shares and, you know, some, some small group things because, you know, I have noticed that when I work with other people, you know, it is more powerful, but so anyway, those are the things, those are the new tools, not new tools, but tools I had not been using. Probably there's nothing there I hadn't heard before, but this, none of those things was I actually really doing or really thinking about. And, um, and there's a ton more stuff there. And, this was the thing, these were the things that spoke to me. And I did muscle test and decide to help me choose what to put in and what to leave out. And so in, in honor of the faster energy, this is the faster talk. Um, there's actually a lot of stuff in the, in there, you know, if, if you choose to use it, if you, you know, crayons easily accessible and there's just a ton you know of things more than you know it, it could be it could be overwhelming and you know not knowing who was going to be here tonight i didn't want to really overwhelm anybody with a ton of stuff but thank you blessings and uh, enjoy the rest of your evening Are there any questions? Gina, quick question. Um, sure. Was, was this a, a cryon video through Lee Carroll? What, what was this? Where yes, well, so it was mostly video, but he has a ton of them, and I, lo and I watched a ton of them. So, um, but... You know, the... the you find them through Cryon, though, K-R-Y-O-N. K-R-Y-O-N. Right. K and, and the, the one on the new energies, was it actually labeled new energies? Is no, no. There, it, was a, it was a compilation of stuff. It just talked about new energy in it. Oh, okay. So, um, but there is one specifically on affirmations. Um, and... I mean, if you want, I'll go back and try to find the titles, and I can I can email them to you. That's that's okay, because I can I can I can do the same thing. I can kind of just uh, as I'm guided to, uh, mm -hmm. because there are times where I go and I read Cry on Book Fifteen, you know, and then I yes. get all the DNA stuff and and everything. So, um, but. Uh, so I, I just wondered if this was in one book, but it seems like you took it from a number of videos. I took it from a number of different places. From yeah, yeah. Because so, I was I was looking for specific things that were relevant, you know, that that struck me, you know, that were relevant. Okay, and interestingly enough, I've been rereading the Star Seed Transmission by Raphael. Um, mm -hmm. uh, Archangel Raphael, and it doesn't say who, um, you know, who channeled it. It just says Raphael. Uh huh. Um, so much of what you said is in that. And oh, really? That was channeled, I think, in the seventies. Wow. You know? How and interesting. Have, yeah, and but I read a page a day. I mean, I should say mm -hmm. a page at night. I usually read one page before I go to bed at night. And uh, mm -hmm. then, I, then I read in the morning, I read one page of St. Germain's I Am Discourses. Mm -hmm. and, wow. And, oh, and that was channeled in 1933. So, wow. You know, it's like this stuff has been around. We did. Yeah. You know, it's like, what what do we pay attention to? It's, it, and I think it surfaces for us as we need to pay attention to it. But but what uh, the, the thing that impressed me the most was that the consciousness that you're you are pure consciousness. What you yes. on is what what you know what you bring about. And um, 
and stop giving away your power. Stop feeling insecure. Stop, you know, being feeling like I can't do it or I don't want to do it or, you know, whatever is the don'ts, you know. So. Yes. About yes. That. And it, it's just so important because the consciousness, it, it just drives to expand itself. So it's going to keep getting, you know, more and more. Um, and it's going to get easier and easier if, you know, I think if we pay attention to these basics that, you know, it is going to get easier to do things with just our thoughts, with just our consciousness. We, we bring it to things, um, you know, we don't have to. I mean, I worked with a Reiki master once who was, you know, using bells and feathers and all kinds of stuff and, you know, not needed. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. and I guess if there's, you have a client who believes in those things that maybe you would maybe still use them, but um, if that's what it takes for them to believe. Yeah. That it can work, or if that's the, if they believe it's the only way it could work, maybe you would still use it. Yeah. But um, you know, and and that's part of that's part of the. You know, there's there's no real recipe for this this kind of work. Um, you know, even, even though some of the other people in it like. Uh, trying to make it a recipe like a one, two, three, four. It it really it's as much an art as it is a science kind of. And you know you need to be able like to relax your client. If your client's in fight or flight, nothing's going to happen. You have to you know make sure that they're breathing. Um, you know you, you that you try to get them into an alpha state. You, you have them do the like the the deep breaths and the, with it or the inhale with a longer exhale and you know close their eyes and think about the, their beach or their whatever and you know their happy place and you know or, or ask them to breathe with you because you know if they're if the, they're worried about the tiger coming after them you know, they're, they're just, there's no healing is going to happen. That's the fear. That's the fear that Brian was talking about. When you're in that fear state, nothing can happen. And it doesn't have to be fear about the healing. It can be fear about anything. Right. You know, if they're, you know, if they're worried about losing their job or, you know, worried about their teenager coming home on time or whatever is, it doesn't matter what the fear is because it's the same physiological change exactly and uh christine i know had her, she yeah. had her hand yes up. i did um uh gina real quickly what was the um example the um the affirmations that cryon gave something about i am whole something yeah, something probably yeah well, i have it written down oh here it is i am healed i am whole thank you spirit got it thank you mm-hmm so it doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to be, you know, cover every possible eventuality. Um, you know, keep it simple because you're talking to your body. Yeah. You know? And, and the body does have its own consciousness, and we need to be aware of that. You know, sometimes your mind wants to eat one thing, but your body wants to eat something else, you know, and that's, <laughs> so, so we know, <laughs> yes, so we, we all know that our bodies, you know, want different things than our mind, and, and it does have its own consciousness, and, you know, and it does have a lot of trauma, but the other thing, I guess, that's not here. And, and I guess I didn't find an example or wasn't having an issue with it. Nothing stood out. But there's, there's more choice now. We always have choice. And that's part of consciousness. And, 
you know, sometimes, you know, I'm not big on finding what the whys of why something is a certain way or why we do certain things. But sometimes if it's causing a problem or if it's something that's traumatic or something that's blocking your healing, if you just bring awareness to it, sometimes it's enough to make it just go away. You know, once you realize, you know, what what it is that's that's really the root cause and you look at it, it's just like, oh, I can let that go. And you just choose to let it go and it's gone. And sometimes we make it into a big deal to let stuff go when it's just a choice. And, and I guess that's one of the things that, that I've just learned from experience, yeah. you know, with this. I've, I've seen it happen too many times. And Alice, did you have something no, else? No, Joe had her hand up. Um, yeah, gosh, I've got a number of questions. First, thank you. Okay. Um, Brian has appealed to me for a while, but I get so overwhelmed because there's so much to listen to. Now, I yes. think you're transcribed. You have, you have to be a member and pay some sort of fee in order to get the transcriptions, but that would make it a lot easier to go back and look for the content. So that would be mm -hmm. one that I have. And another is you were kind of going down a list. Uh, there was sort of a narrative, but you were hitting on different things that you hit different sheets of paper. One of them was application. Do you happen to have? I know part of this was to get us back to the basics, but do you have uh, a list? A list of? Well, affirmations was one thing to, to do those affirmations. You also said group healing was more effective than individual. Mm -hmm. I feel like I'm getting some feedback. There's a voice coming back at me as I talk. So. Um, don't know what that's about. So there were some major points that you made. So maybe I shouldn't say a list. Oh, do you know what? I could I can go through and put one together. I would love to see the major points because your conversation okay. style, I guess you might call it, where things would come to you and you would say them. I'm one of these people that does better with an outline or with. I called it a little okay. Bit. Yeah, I okay. Points better. Uh, I don't want to put you to any extra effort, but it, it would it would not take a long time to do that because it's not very long to start with. So, um, you know, I I can do that, and um, my email is. Yeah, I don't know how to reach you. So my email is Gina Mayberry at gmail.com. Okay. Gina so, so if you, anybody would like it, email me and I will send it to you by Wednesday. Wonderful. Thank you. And then the first question about the uh, trends of the, what was the word I want? <laughs> I just lost the word. The transcriptions. Thank you. Um, um, I don't, I don't know about that because I don't um, subscribe to those. Mm -hmm. So I don't, I don't really have any knowledge about that. Just a lot easier not to listen to everything if you could just read it. That's all. I'll yeah. Yourself and thank you. I thought you might, you might know. About yeah. It. No, I didn't. I did not look at any of his like actual. I mean, there are some videos out that say the, you know, healing circle, whatever, but I didn't even go to those. Got it. There's just so much available. And I'm, I'm like you, I think that's why for years I didn't listen to it. Yes. Because it's so much. And that's why I wanted to keep it everything tonight short. <laughs> because there's, you know, a lot of information there, but it can be overwhelming. Oh, it is. I speed him up. I listen to him at double time. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. I guess if there are no more questions, then we'll just go into our prayer.
Okay. And, uh, and you all know how what this is all about. So very gently close your eyes. Take a deep breath in. And exhale. Dear Mother, Father, God, Divine, Infinite Spirit, Source of all that is, we thank you once again for the wisdom that Gina brings. And we thank you for her knowledge and her understanding and her interpretation of what was important from the cryon material today. We're very grateful to receive it in a condensed form. And we ask for special healing for my son, my daughter, my daughter-in-law, my grandbaby, the, my daughter's new husband, the Jones family, Sweeney family, Zarnopas family, all the new events that are going to take place um, in the coming year, and anybody who is in desperate need of healing for any reason whatsoever, and those transitioning to spirit who literally do not know where they are. And Joe, I'm going to go with you. Okay. Um, I lift up my family, uh, friends, uh, Jason and his uh, family, the Seekers group, um, all people and animals that are suffering, and Rocky and Zach. Great. Gina. Um, everyone here tonight, um, rays of healing. Um, my daughter and son-in-law. And everyone who is in pain or suffering or fear tonight. Thank you. And Jane, unmute yourself. Un Special prayers for my sister um, and my, my, my family, for a friend of mine that he passed over smoothly and quickly, and then his family, uh, prayers for them, prayers for my friends that have become widows in the last year and a half, and their families, and for everyone who is in pain and suffering. Thank you. Great, thank you. And Wendy. Thank you, Gina, for tonight. Appreciate you. God bless Gina and all those who are on the call, those in the Rays of Healing Ministry. Wanda, Barb, Anne Marie, Neil, Rodrigo, and our school group. And all those who've been affected by COVID and are still being affected by it. Lift this world out of its funk into its next phase of evolution with ease and joy and glory. Beautiful. Thank you, Wendy. And Christine. Thank you so much for this, Gina. It was awesome. I would like to ask for healing for my mom, for my dad, for myself, for John, Sam, my grandmother, um, also Cricket, Beth and her family, Beth just transitioned, um, for Barb, for everyone here tonight, um, the new COVID strain and Mother Earth, thank you. Thank you everybody. And we really appreciate you being here. Uh, the next week uh, will be a sound bath with Michelle Porter Will, Teresa Jones, and Iris McCray. Uh, they, last year, they did that as the last presentation for the year. 
but uh, somehow or other this year it ended up being the first first Monday in December. <coughs> Could you bring in the archangels and all those that you usually do? Oh, at the I'm, end? Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, that's that's holiday mode. I, I just had. I yeah. get it. I don't. I get it. I just need that. I love it when you do that. I feel it so strongly. Thank, Thank you, Joe. Oh, I'm so glad. Yeah. All right. And so, just very gently close your eyes. And we are so grateful for all the helpers that are around us, surround us, and are one with us. The angels, the archangel, the ascended masters, the Reiki masters, but most especially Master Jesus, Master Buddha, Master Katumi, Saint Francis, Saint Germain, Saint Gabriel, Saint Raphael, Saint Michael, the Blessed Mother, the Divine Feminine, the Divine Masculine, Mary Magdalene, Moses, Metatron, Melchizedek, Mohammed, and Kuan Yin. We ask to be cleared, centered, aligned, balanced, and grounded. We also ask to be clear channels of light for Metatron and his healing angels so that we each and our people we have interceded for receive the highest vibrations of light possible. We also ask for the assistance of the great rays, the lords and masters of the rays and the archangels of the rays. And last, the Elohim, the creator God, of which we too are a part. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ, and in the name of I am. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Oh, and for me, you're you're absolutely right. That prayer just kind of summarizes us as I am. Again, another name for God, but it brings us back full circle to who we are. And uh, I, I so thank you because I, I, I hate it when I miss a part of that prayer. So, yeah, I feel incomplete. I just love that so much. Thank you, Joe. Thank you for doing that. That was wonderful. All right, everybody. Well, we will see you soon. And thank you, Gina. You're welcome. That yes, thank you so much, Gina. So good to mm -hmm. see you. Thank yes, you, Gina. good to see you too. Good to see you too. Good night, everyone. Hey, okay, thank night. you and good night, everybody. Oh, hey, Hi. Alice, real quick, did you see my um my text? I did. The, you, you mean with the, <laughs> the video? With the video? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh my God, that you had a gazillion uh, orbs going through, and some were so big and so bright. It was amazing. <laughs> Yeah, as my mom would say, that one's a fatty. <laughs> that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway. All right. Have a good night. Good night. Oh. Good night. I'm going to text you. Bye. Okay. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye. Sounds good. Bye-bye. Did, did you have a question, Joe? Oh, I guess she didn't. I guess not. <laughs> she she said yeah. she was gonna text you. Did she was she, did she mean you, Christine? I think so. Yeah. Okay. All well, right. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what All right. About. All right. Have good a good night. night. Bye. And, no, mom's last day is, yeah. is this Thursday, right? This Thursday. Yeah. Oh yeah. Stop the recording real quick. So Emily oh, doesn't yeah. have to cut out so much. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. Let me let me get the recording uh pause stopped. What do you mean recording in progress?